vintage amp that uh, George brought in. And it has a really small speaker, so there's really, quite frankly, not a lot of options in terms of mic placement. When I'm recording guitar amps, the basic rule of thumb is, it's difficult for you to see in the video, but here's where the speaker is right here. If you put the microphone out here on the outside of the speaker, you're going to get more low end and capture a bit more tone. If you do it right in the middle, um, that's kind of a void that I would recommend staying a little bit away from. What you'll probably want to do if you're going for more top end presence, especially the, the uh, bees in a tin can kind of sound, you're going to want to go right where the dome hits the speaker part. That's where you're going to capture most of that. And so there's really not that many options for an amp this small. The only thing that I would recommend is with most amplifiers, it's generally kind of a good idea to elevate them off of the ground. Uh, this one specifically, I think, sounds a lot better whenever it's not on the ground. And it also gives you more range to work with your microphones. Um, so this one, we're going to like try it like this. This amp over here, once we get tracking through this combo, I kind of want to see how it sounds first before I make any decisions. We're also over here already on top of a, um, a carpet, which kind of helps couple it a little bit from the ground anyway. So I think we're going to be good as is, but we'll see once he starts blasting some signal through it. So um, I guess we're going to do a take. using the rack mount Pacifica unit. Um, this guy right here, which is basically based on a uh, Quad 8 design um, from the old Quad 8 consoles. And um, going out of that into um, one of the Hammer EQs again. Again, it's just a, just a great EQ to put on everything as far as I'm concerned. And uh, one of the big things that I've noticed with the Hammer uh, you know, I keep spending time talking about it, but with the hammer, one of the things you'll notice is there's software you can use to take impulse responses or to mimic EQ curves uh, from a hardware unit, and then in theory you can capture that setting and then continually use that EQ all the way down on a bunch of different channels. And some of those work halfway decent with some EQs, but with the hammer, if you try to do that, it really is impossible to get digital to really mimic what's going on in that box. It just doesn't do a very good job of it. Um, and it, it will become very apparent that you just need to buy a couple of them at some point because you will want to use it on several different sources uh, all at the same time because it just does such a great job in so many different areas. Um, it's just designed really uniquely. It's not like a typical EQ. There's a lot of magic under the hood. Uh, it's not a, just a typical EQ design, it's not just a tube EQ, it's not just a solid state EQ. So, um, you know, do a little bit more research on that if you're interested in it, but uh, I, I try to focus a little bit more on just applications and uh, just think the EQ works and shines in a bunch of places and, you know, makes it sound like I know what I'm doing a lot more <laughs> than I maybe do. All right, George, roll in. All right. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 